In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners to conversion, Christ of mercy. Christ, Christ. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord of mercy. Lord, May your mighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. And the peace to the Lord of good will. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world of mysterious. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, Put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God whom I seek. For you my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth parched, lifeless and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a great, greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. 
My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the hearts of your hearts that you may see what hope his call has for you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, I would wish to humbly welcome you to the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We have listened to three readings. And the first reading, it's so provocative, you know, the words the prophet uses brings out the deep-seated emotions in him. Jeremiah, as the prophet for our reflection today, was called by God at the age of 23 to go preach to the people of Anathoth. His father, was called Amos, and by the dint of Israelite priesthood, it was lineage. So Jeremiah became a prophet to his own people. And to work among your own people is not easy, very difficult, 
because they know your background, your history, and what your family consists of. But Jeremiah obeyed God's instruction and went over to preach to his people. And he gives us some of the hardships he endured, ridicule, humiliation, death, many threats on his life. So he comes to a point where he's fed up and would wish to quit and throws his hands in the air and says, oh God, you have seduced me. And in our version today, we have, you have duped me and I have allowed myself to be duped. My dear friends, these are words of Jeremiah. And if we search our souls and our hearts, there have been times in our lives we may have said similar words to God in moments of pain, grief, and loss. We begin to question the God who has invited us into discipleship. My dear friends, to journey with God is not easy. I am a very young priest. I'm only nine years. But I think that these nine years have exposed me to what it means to journey with Jesus, to walk with the Lord. It's not easy. Every day comes with its own surprises. Sometimes God comes to afflict you. Other times he comes to comfort you. Friends, that is the invitation we have received. And today in our gospel reading, Jesus tells his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. Why must he go to Jerusalem? When you read the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus goes to Jerusalem once in his lifetime, in his ministry, to face death, persecution, humiliation. It is only in the Johannine Gospel that we find Jesus going to Jerusalem three times during his ministry. My dear friends, why does Jesus set his face as a flint to go to Jerusalem? It's very profound. Jerusalem is the cradle of the faith. The beginnings of the faith. And no prophet dies outside Jerusalem. So Jesus must go to Jerusalem. There awaits him his death. The father's will. What had Jesus come to do? To give his life for you and for me. To tell us the mercy of God. Not the holiness of God. The compassionate mercy of God. Revealed to us in his son. My dear friends, there is in each of us the human instinct of avoidance of pain and pursuit of pleasure. In each of us, which scientists will call preservative instincts, you know, you want to avoid pain and to amass pleasure as much as we can. But here, Jesus does not mean words. His invitation to the disciples is a full commitment of faith to, to the will of God. What does God's will lead to? My dear friends, to do the will of God, it's not easy. When Mary said yes to the Lord, she did not fully comprehend what it entailed. We have said yes to the Lord in many moments of our lives, in our baptism, confirmation, holy matrimony, priesthood. And there are times we want to quit and say, Lord, I have had it enough. I can carry on. The commitments we have made, are we able to stand? There are times, I must confess, there are times I have wondered whether I have made the best choice or whether I should quit or carry on. 
my dear friends, these are legitimate questions that arise in our minds and in our hearts. But Jesus says, the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem, be denied by the elders, the scribes, and the chief priests. Look at the category of people who afflict Jesus. The elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. These are supposedly the cream of society. They know the good. And the corruption of the good is the worst form of corruption. They know it. Sometimes where our pains, our betrayal come from, makes it very difficult to forgive. The one you love most, the one who is dear to you, hates you the most. I must go to Jerusalem in order that I will die. My dear friends, and not only does Jesus die, there is a promise that comes with embracing the will of God. On the third day, he will rise. He will be raised. My friends, when we remain faithful with the Lord, we shall also share in his glory. So today, I would wish to invite you to reflect on the will of God in your life. Saint Padre Pio, when he was instructing novices in the seminary, would say, the greatest prayer you must make the center of your life is thy will be done. What is God's will for my life? What is God's will for your life? What is God's will for our life? My dear friends, there is a tendency to turn back on suffering to quit. But Jesus invites us, when we have followed him, when we have denied ourselves, glory awaits us. To conclude this homily, my dear friends, I would wish that we, we reflect on what Jesus says to Peter. Get behind me. Get behind me. Last week, we heard Peter who had made a very profound confession about Jesus. You are the Son of God, the Messiah. And Jesus promises him the keys of the kingdom. You are the rock on which I will build my church. I think that when I reflect carefully, I find the attitude, the behavior of Peter in me sometimes no pain, God forbid, to what a loved one go through pain is the most excruciating experience. And Jesus says, get behind me. He's a disciple, and a disciple is a learner. So he follows the master. So when we allow Jesus to lead us on our journey of life, We will avoid some pitfalls, some mistakes, but it takes courage. It takes trust. It takes abandonment. It is my prayer that as we come to this Mass, the Lord will give us his graces, that each day of our lives, the road might not be easy, and it won't be easy but with trust and confidence in the promises of the Lord, we will be able to say, Lord, let thy will be done. May God continue to sustain us, to grant us the grace to persevere, that when we have labored for the Lord and with the Lord, we shall share in his glory. God bless and keep you. Shall we profess our faith in God?
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon it was He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have from the land. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Shall we turn to God with our petitions? We pray that the church will serve as a model, leading us to take up Christ's cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray that the world's policy makers will approach their mission with mindfulness of the need for global peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray that those who find it hard to trust their neighbors will work toward a dialogue of mutual respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be cared for with gentleness and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who have died and those displaced by Hurricane Laura. May they receive the strength and support needed to recover and rebuild from the devastation they have experienced. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who have died and for the people of St. Michael's, the special intention of this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick listed in our bulletin, for our family members serving in the military, and for our own personal petitions that we now express in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and merciful God, we come to you with humility and simplicity of heart, pouring forth our petitions and our praise. We ask you to receive them which we make through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, for creation, for through your goodness, your this bread, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, that become for us a bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, for creation, for through your goodness, your this wine, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, 
Let me come for us our spiritual dream. Lord God, be pleased to receive this sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sins. Friends, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to the Lord our God. For the praise and glory of God's name. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for your holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clear. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, our Lord, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, as we see who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will give you enough for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious, and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May this man claim in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all those who receive Amen. Lamb of God, you took away the sins of the world. Of the sins, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Of the sins, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not to you Jesus Christ, for life.
the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The announcements for this weekend. The food pantry is next weekend, September 5th and 6th. A list of items needed is on the parish website and in the bulletin, which is also on the parish website. The first Saturday devotion mass will be held at St. Joseph's in Erlane on Saturday, September 5th. The rosary will begin at 8 a.m., mass at 8.30 a.m., followed by reconciliation. Father John will be celebrating mass with us the weekend of September 12th and 13th. A farewell reception will be held outside the church after the weekend masses. If the weather does not permit us to be outside, the reception will be held in the back of church. The Harvest Festival, scheduled for Sunday, October 11th, has been canceled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you to all who have donated so generously to the annual diocesan appeal. We are in need of $2,856. Please prayerfully consider giving if you have not yet given. In response to these local and global disasters, Bishop Johnson asks that a special collection be taken up at our parishes this weekend. Donations can be placed in the collection baskets at the back of church that are noted for disaster relief. Gifts can also be made online at dmdiocese.org slash giving or mailed directly to the Diocese of, Di Dias of Des Moines. Contributions to disaster relief efforts in Beirut will be sent to Catholic Relief Services. Um, they're working with our local charities to help the individuals and families most severely affected by the Draco. If you could stay for a few minutes after Mass to help with the cleaning, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Permit me to thank you for coming to this Mass. It's always a delight to see you at Mass. I'd like to thank Cherry, Shyla, Jason, and everyone who assisted to make this mass very solid. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our mass ascended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.